Hello friends. In this video, I will show you how to implement merge sort algorithm in MATLAB. Before I proceed with the code, let's see what the merge sort is all about. You can refer to the Wikipedia page which nicely explains what the merge sort is. So if you see this diagram very nicely explains what in merge sort the algorithm does is it just breaks the complete list of the numbers into two parts and then it merges in each part individually in a recursive manner. So we will implement the same logic in our MATLAB code. You can uh, refer, refer to the documents in Wikipedia or Google for more details on merge sort. So let's proceed. So first let's let's create a function, MATLAB function. Who is this? Tuck, 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 tuck. Okay, yeah, I got it. I will name it as my merge sort. Sorry, spelling is wrong, but it doesn't matter anyway. And I will have only, I don't think I will have two inputs. I will have just one input. I will name it X, simple. And my output, the sorted output will be Y. Yes. I'll first save this as must sort, okay. And yes. So let's start. So as you might have seen my other videos, yeah, please do watch my other videos on bubble sort and quick sort, the links for which are above. And um, so the first step what we should we I usually do is first let me find the length of the input uh, vector which is x and then let me first have a return condition of this uh, recursive function so that will be if my n is less than uh, that is basically the length is less than 2 which is means it's a single element so my y will be equal to x yeah okay so once we have this our uh, uh, element. So as the next step, what we have to do is we have to call this uh, uh, merge sort recursively for. So we'll divide this x into two parts uh, till half first and second half, uh, and then we'll call this merge sort recursively for first half and second half. So let's do that. So first, let's have a uh, n by two, which is like um, n by two, but I will like to convert it into an integer form. So I'll just have like say for example, in thirty two. You can this makes sure that we don't um, end up into decimal values if say for example n is our odd number say for example 3 or 5 or 7 then uh, then that may give a problem so that's why this better to convert it into explicitly explicitly convert it into a integer value so once we have this now let's call this merge sort uh, recursively for x first we'll uh, give them first half part of it which is n by 2 and in second merge sort, I will give uh, second part of x which is from n by 2 uh, column and yes till the end. And of course we have to um, take this uh, uh, output of this in some variable. So we will have two variables now x1 and x2. So x1 will be the left part of the sorted uh, x and x2 will be the right part of the sorted x. I think one one bracket is missing. That's why it's giving it to the So once we have, so now let's assume that in this sorting algorithm we have x1 and x2 which is uh, well sorted out. So now uh, we can write our main algorithm of sorting two sorted uh, numbers. So this this will the place where the main algorithm will go. So uh, uh, please refer to this to understand what it happens so first it will take the first half and second half so this is my x1 and this is my x2 and then one by one we have to compare each element of x1 and x2 so <coughs> before that let's have a variable called the count of x1 which we initialize as 1 and then count of x2 which will again be initialized as uh, 1 so once we have this We can start in a while loop while count of x1 is uh, less than and uh, probably we will need the length of x1 and x2 as well because we have to compare now we have to do the looping for x1 and x2 separately so we will take that uh, separately so n1 will be my uh, probably length of x1 and n2 will be my uh, length of x2 yes 
I put semicolons and I, I, I prefer to give a space just my instead of coding yes. So once we have this in one and two, so we compare whether it's uh, less than n one. And if that is the case, then what we can do is so we can compare it with uh, if of okay. So this will be for equal to also because to compare till that nth uh, length of the complete one. So if x okay, so here we have to take x one. If x one of count of x one. If this is less than uh, my x2 and count of x2 so we are basically comparing one by one uh, all the elements then what should we have to do we have to assign y okay so we have to first initialize y which we have not done it yet uh, over here so we can just have a y equal to uh, empty uh, array. so it's initialized so we can now have is y equal to and we have to concatenate here so y equal to y and then we are followed by x so here since this is less than so we will have to uh, concatenate with the x1 value over here we just do control c control uh, v and and of course we have to increase the counter value of x1 because once that value is taken we don't need that value anymore okay so once and we have done then we can write the else part so else part means this x2 is a small than x1 so we have to insert an x1 uh, x, x2 here in the y so most of things will remain the same we can just copy it uh, the part of the code and instead of x1 we can we have to just write x2 so x2 and here again we have to increase the count of x2 here yes so once we have it then i write and yeah so th this is the main logic which will do it but one thing we if, if you uh, notice that uh, in the while loop we are just comparing for x1 uh, so we could have compared with for x2 also over here uh, in the while loop but uh, i will follow a different approach a bit over here uh, probably you can see it's a bit of more uh, rudimentary approach so i'll have a separate x2 that i will just compare if a count of x2 has uh, uh, reached the last limit so if it's greater than n2 which is the length of my second uh, one then what i should do is i should just um, uh, i think uh, I, I should just put this part of the code because in that case uh, you should just uh, have my y the value of x1 to be inserted into y and do a x plus one so it will keep on going for uh, that part yeah these warnings we can ignore because uh, this is expected warning and that's not a problem yeah because it's, it's just saying that uh, we are increasing the size of the um, arrays in the loop and that's that's uh, not a good programming practice for the speed performance point of view but it is it, fine for the time being okay so once we have done this so we have to still consider a case where say for example x1 is uh, all the small values are done uh and then we and then some of the x2 values are so basically this this condition is not reached count 2 has not reached 2 and 2 so that we can do separately over here so we can just write for say for example j equal to count of x2 till n2 till the last element and then we should do uh i think uh, okay here one thing probably we miss out whenever this happens we don't need to further go over here we can just simply do is continue so so that um, we skip that particular iteration uh, of the code if uh, count of x2 is greater than n2 because otherwise it will give some kind of matrix uh, index exceeded error when it comes to this if condition over here yeah so in this for loop if i i should do is just this part i think that i should uh, just make sure that uh, i'm assigning the value of y uh, with x2 but over here it won't be the count of x2 because it will be the j where we are because we are iterating over j so that will be the case and that's it i think so this is the end of the function so if i make it bigger so yeah initially we are doing this this is the return condition over here for us uh, and then we are taking the half value and then we are saying sending the value for the okay so here probably what we should do is we should put plus one because otherwise the n by 2th element will be repeated for both x1 and x2 that is what we don't want and yeah so things look good so let's try this uh, algorithm that is working fine or not so uh, 
let's have a vector v i have just chosen random numbers i just type i think it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven digits are there and yeah and now let me call my merge sort with this input variable v and let's see what happens or to get auto memory probably there is some infinite so let's try to understand what is happening wrong here. So it gives at line by 11, the error, it's one. This is tuk tuk tuk. Okay, I think I got it because in this return condition, this is, uh, that's why I sometimes say that uh, putting comments are very important. So I forgot to mention the return and now let me try if it fixes the problem. Yes, perfect. It, it did fix the problem. So I just forgot to mention the return because, it, of course, in the return condition, it should exit this function and go to the next statement. So if you see uh, what our v was, our v is this. So uh, when we call the merge sort over v, it, it returns a uh, uh, sorted value. Yeah, it's fine. No, no, no let's take some other example. Uh, in my previous uh, video, also, I have taken this u as one of my complicated uh, with a mixture of all rational, irrational, negative, positive numbers. And uh, yeah, so if you see, I have also taken pi, which results to 3.1416. And so, yeah, so this is my value. Now let's try to sort this out. I, but I'm pretty sure if, if it uh, works for one of the uh, uh, vector, it will work for the other as well. So if I do vector of u, so it works fine for this. Yeah, it works fine. So if you see uh, negative, positive, rational, irrational, all numbers, it's able to handle nicely. Okay, so this is the code. I hope, uh, uh, yeah, I hope this video was useful for you and you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, or if you have any comments, or if you need the source code, you can just uh, put on put the comments in my comment section. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.